All right, thanks very much everyone for joining us today. Again, my name is Ian Hefley and I'm an admissions counselor here at SIT Study Abroad in Brattleboro, Vermont. And I'm joined by Dre Meisnix here and I'll hand it over to you. Hi there, uh, my name is Dre Meisnix and I'm studying right now at the University of Colorado Boulder. And last spring I studied abroad with SIT in Samoa. Thanks very much for uh, agreeing to talk with us today and I'm just going to jump right in to the questions that I have for you, okay? Great. So first of all, Dre, what is the main reason you chose your SIT study abroad program in Samoa? Um, I ch well, I chose SIT because I was really excited about experiential learning. Um, I wasn't super excited about sitting in a big classroom, a big lecture. I wanted small focused groups and I wanted to be out learning by doing, which is one of SIT's main components, which is really what drew me to the program. Excellent. So experiential learning is what brought you all the way to the South Pacific Islands then. Definitely. <laughs> now, can you name for me a key skill you believe you gained while studying abroad in SIT Samoa? Um, I think just being able to connect with people, all different types of people, even though there may be some real apparent differences. Um, when I first got to Samoa, the first thing I noticed was how I felt really different from everyone who lived there. And by the time, like maybe two weeks into it, I realized, I was started to realize all the similarities between um, me and all the Samoans and all the people from the South Pacific which is a really empowering experience. Thanks very much for that. Um, now, to go a little deeper, is there one thing that you could name for us that you think you learned with SIT Samoa um, that you believe you wouldn't have learned anywhere else? Um, well, I spent my ISP period focusing on traditional Samoan tattooing. And tattooing has always been a passion of mine. I've always been really interested in the art behind it. So to be able to go to Samoa and interview and learn from the masters of this art was a really amazing experience. And I know that I wouldn't have been able to do that anywhere else. All right. And just to go a little further with that, um, uh, these videos are for some prospective students sometimes as well. So they may not be totally familiar with the, in, uh, the ISP or independent study projects. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on what your ISP was about for us? Sure. So for most of the program, um, we had like set times and classes and then the last three weeks are more devoted to your independent study project. And you can choose anything that you want as long as your academic director approves it. So I, since I've always had a passion for tattooing and it's so integral in the culture in Samoa, I chose to do Samoan tattooing. And so for three weeks I interviewed um, a few of the master tattooists and it's a really protected art in Samoa. So it was amazing that I had the opportunity to talk with these people when it's such a sacred, protected art. Um, so I spent three weeks really getting to know these people and really getting to know the art and what it means and what it means for a Samoan person to get the traditional tattoo. Um, and at the end, uh, we may, everyone has to make a compilation, uh, a paper pretty much, on their project. And mine was a compilation of interviews and sort of the overall themes I gathered. I, I find it very uh, apropos of what I was listening to on Vermont Public Radio on the way into the office today. They did a little expose on South Pacific tattooing art. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, um, I, I don't know, I didn't recognize any of the names, but I wonder if anyone had ever been on an SIT Samoa program. I wonder, yeah, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> yeah, it was. it's called VPR here in the Green Mountain State, if you want to look okay. into it a little more. Okay, great. Now, um, I, I, just to change gears a little bit here, can you name a favorite aspect of your SIT program for us? 
Sure. Um, I think my favorite aspect of the ISP program, or the SIT program, sorry, um, was I think it was the first time I've really gone out on my own. Um, I've done some travel before, but it was more with my family. And I think it just, it really showed me that I was ready for it and that every day, like, crazy things happened and I learned so much from them and from all these experiences. And I think just waking up every morning and not 100% knowing what's going to happen and sort of expecting the unexpected was really awesome and a really, really good practice for me. You sound like a perfect candidate for a Peace Corps volunteer with that kind of outlook on life. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually really funny you mentioned that. I was just talking about Peace Corps yesterday with a friend. Oh, okay. Well, um, just an aside, I served in the Peace Corps for three years in wow. Mozambique in, South a in Southern Africa. Wow, that's amazing. Well, we can continue that conversation afterwards if you'd like. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Now, um, as you know, as someone in one of our smaller programs, um, SIT does tend to keep the programs on the smaller side to let uh, the students really delve in and get their hands on the academic content, and it leads to a very intimate academic experience, but also at the same time that decreases word of mouth for us. So there are a lot of people out there that don't know what SIT is. And I'm sure as someone who um, is working as a student ambassador for us now, that you've run into a lot of people who have no idea who SIT is. So how would you explain SIT study abroad to someone who doesn't know who we are? OK. Um... I actually just had this conversation this morning. Um, and SIT Study Abroad is a program I think that's unlike any other. Um, there are programs all over the world in tons of different countries and regions. And I think the main component, the main component for me is the importance of experiential learning and the emphasis on going out and doing and learning, as opposed to just being told. Um, and I think that the ISP is also a really big part of that. It's just that it's that period where you really get to delve into what once you figure out what your interests are once you're there, you get to delve into really what you love and what really gets you excited about that country. And you've three weeks to you definitely have a goal and you've got to set a lot, meet a lot of um, requirements. So there's a lot to do, but that three weeks is really your time to interact with the country how you want to and interact with the people how you want to in a responsible global citizen manner. Thanks for answering that so succinctly there. Oh, you're, I hope that was okay. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's experiential learning, so everything works to some degree, right? Right. <laughs> now, um, a lot of times, as you know, too, our students have used their research to continue studies. So have you pursued any continuing studies in either um, where you are, um, uh, where you were located or where uh, the theme of your project was? Um, so Next semester, I am signed up for an anthropology class focusing on the people of the South Pacific. And I'm so excited to be able to take that class. Um, and right now, if, um, I was taking an international affairs course. Um, and there was a unit on globalization, which was something we really focused on in Samoa. So it was really awesome to see some of those things that I was able to witness in real time. Um, to actually read about them in a textbook and then have a conversation about them and be able to share what I experienced and how real it really is. That sounds really amazing, and I would imagine globalization from such a small country of 200,000 people has a different impact than from our perch here in the first world. Definitely. It was a really eye-opening experience just Every day you can see it happening and see changes in health and in diet and just in everyday ways of life, which 
I've never seen anything like that apparent. And I'd be interested personally in the whole identity the split between Samoa as a nation and then American Samoa as a protectorate of the U.S. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. I actually was a little bit ill when I went to American Samoa, so my experience with it was a little bit different. But you can definitely tell the difference. But no matter where you went, on any of the Samoan islands, that Samoan identity is really strong. Well, thank you very much for spending some time today. We've uh, reached the end of all of our questions, but if you have any parting words that you want to say or um, any information that you want to impart upon our students as they apply to study abroad, now's the time. Okay, great. Um, one thing I just thought of that I didn't mention that was really, really important was the homestay. Um, in many SIT programs, I know that the homestay is more extensive and lasts a little bit longer. In, in Samoa, we stayed in a village for eight nights. And it really was, like, that's when I really got to know the heart and soul of Samoa and, like, the normal way of life as opposed to living in the big city. Um, and the homestay is, it's a, I can understand that it's a little bit daunting of an experience, but it was the most rewarding, and I learned so much, and you really just, it becomes home really quickly, which is really special. Um, and I'm just so thankful that I was able to go on an SIT program. It really has changed my outlook on a lot of things. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Um, as someone who is not involved with the Samoa program to, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I always love hearing from other alumni as well. Sure. And again, I just really want to thank you for taking the time today. And um, I look forward to hearing about your adventures. And I'd love to hear how that uh, South Pacific anthropology class turns out for you. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. You have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye.